Here's a brief overview of the data collected on the stockpile near the crusher pad on August 1st using SARPOINT's mobile mapping system. Total data collection time was about 9 or 10 minutes. The blue line indicates where we actually drove. So we entered near the truck shop, drove past rejects, came down the slope um, around the, the uh, east base of the stockpile and around the west base. Mid drive was down under the mid drive. Then we came back out on the uh, outside past the rejects building again, up past the CT line, scanning the back side of the stockpile, and then down and scanning the top side of the stockpile. The entire the entire drive took us about uh, nine or ten minutes, and the uh, resulting data <coughs> was. D delivered and, and uh, transformed into a tin, which is a very common surface for all mapping and, and uh, geometry applications. The white line was actually provided to us by the survey group, and that is uh, what the survey has determined is the boundary of the stockpile uh, near the crusher pad. So it took us about uh, an hour to process the data to and download it from the computers in the truck and then once we have the data it's uh, uh, about 15 minutes to upload it to the software package we looking at now and then about uh, 20 minutes to prepare it to create the tin. Once we have it in the tin though we're, we can actually move quite quickly in doing a lot of uh, different applications. Just click on our mesh. The easiest way to deal with volume determination is click on the mesh, tools, measure, the mesh volume below the reference plane. We'll take half meter increments. Anything smaller would take too long. There's our real time calculation. 34,871 cubic meters below the 280 level within the boundary of the stockpile. Five hundred eighty-seven thousand seven hundred and seventy-six cubic meters above the two eighty level within the boundary of the stockpile. So, from the time we started surveying till these results would be ready, uh, easily next day deliverables. All right, so what we've seen thus far is that we were able to take the point cloud collected from our mobile scan system of the ore stockpile and input that into software that allowed us to do analytic calculations uh, using the point cloud, such as cross-sectional slopes, uh, total volumes, um, and such. Basically, doing calculations on a very accurate, very dense three-dimensional model. And that, of course, is the primary use of this uh, technology. However, uh, we've also been applying point clouds to simulation and training purposes. And what you're seeing on the screen right now is a video game basically built out of the point cloud of the ore stockpile. You can see in the lower left we have a map showing the overview of the stockpile. On the upper right we have a compass showing the direction of view. We can pan, we can tilt our view, we can move forwards and backwards. We can also identify uh, elements on the screen. If you take a look on the lower right you'll see that where my cursor is the coordinates of the cursor are shown as well as the elevation. So here the Base elevation is 277.3. This berm here is 282.4. Total 
top of the berm or top of the stockpile is 298.3 and the 280 elevation is approximately this bench right here. Uh, what I'm going to do here is of course you can navigate around this stockpile and the nice thing compared to uh, traditional point cloud viewing routines is that of course as I go through towards the stockpile I don't go through the point cloud rather I go up it. So here I am on the top I have a perspective view of the entire pile I've given myself the ability to fly so I can get a nice overview shot and uh, and I have my game now of course this terrain could be imported into any other simulator software so if I wanted to work on building a training tool for haul truck drivers or dozer operators or shovel uh, operators I could take an actual example of a stockpile or shovel pit at the mine, scan it, import it into the simulator and now have a real scenario which will improve the training um, of the operators. One of the other applications is uh, in scene investigation. So for example here we are on top of the stockpile. And what I'm going to do is we have this entrance berm here. This is the entryway right here into the stockpile or one of them. I'm going to insert some vehicles here. So I'm going to put some Broncos. Mine ready of course. I'm going to put one here, one here, and then one over here. So we have three vehicles on top of the of the stockpile just in front of this berm. And then what I would like to see is I would like to see at what point if I for example go down to the way that I'm actually supposed to drive to the top of this stockpile, namely on the road, what point I'll see the vehicles. So here I don't see the vehicles yet. I navigate up the ramp. I don't see any vehicles. I navigate further up the ramp. And I finally see the roof of one, two, but I don't see the third. It's actually not until I get to here that I see all three vehicles. And uh, so I can judge the line of sight, I can judge visibilities, and so on and so forth. I can also again go and find that the top of this berm here is 296.6, whereas the vehicles are at 295.4, and I myself am at 292.3. I have a viewpoint two meters above the, the surface. So I can do calculations to see how this berm should be changed, if necessary, or if there should be any offset spots where vehicles shouldn't park um, so that they're visible at all times through these approaches. And as I said, this is one of the less quantitative but more uh, training-based examples of what we can do with these point clouds that we are rapidly uh, collecting.